Once it was discovered that Ethernet switches do have an impact on the sound quality, many manufacturers jumped on the bandwagon. Uptone chose another type of transport playing another song. Although there are people that can't understand why a switch can have impact on the sound quality, once you've heard it there's no denying. Of course your stereo needs to be of sufficient quality and you do need to be interested in sound quality. Any switch that isn't broken will pass on audio bits, but starting with my setup 2, differences between a 40 euro switch and an audiophile type are absolutely audible. In my setup 1, even differences between several makes and types are clear, see my playlist on network switches for details. They all roughly do the same. Filter electric contamination and reclock the signal. The Ether Regen on review here differs from the others in that next to the filtering and the reclocking, it offers one unique network feed at 100 megabit per second that is fully isolated from the other network ports and fully reclocked. It is this feed that has to be used to feed your audio computer, streamer or network bridge. If you want to connect your computer directly to your stereo, you need a digital to analog converter, DAC for short. That can be a separate device connected to your amplifier as drawn here, but it can also be integrated in your amp or CD player. You connect the computer or laptop over USB speeder for Toslink to the DAC. You could also use the analog outputs of the computer, but the quality will be rather poor and I think that adding the Ether Regen won't improve that. Using USB will give the best sound quality, but not all DACs have USB inputs. The Etherique Gen's B Ethernet socket is connected to the Ethernet socket on the computer. Then one of the Ethernet sockets on the A side of the Etherique Gen is connected to your router. If you use a streamer or network bridge, the Etherique Gen's B Ethernet socket is connected to the Ethernet socket on your network player or network bridge while one of the Ethernet sockets on the A side is connected to the router. The computer, now functioning as a music server or network share, is also connected to your router or to the A side of the Ether Regen if that's more convenient. The connection between the Ether Regen and the router or another switch in your network can also be made using fiber optics, as we will see later on. The Ether Regen is only a small device measuring 110 by 112 by 27 mm. If you take the BNC connector in account, the depth is 125 mm. It weighs 310 grams. The medical grade switch mode power supply weighs 220 grams. On the A side we see the SFP cage for an SFP module if you want to use fiber optics. I'll come back to that. Furthermore there are four 1 gigabit per second Ethernet ports with integrated status lines. On the secondary side, the so called B side, there is a DC power input. The matching 7.5 volts DC medical grade switch mode power supply is included. Next to it a ground terminal that in most cases is not needed. Then the B side 100 megabit per second Ethernet port that feeds the cleaned up Ethernet signal to the hardware playing the music. Normally the internal clock is used, but an external 10 MHz clock signal can be connected to this B and C and will be used instead when this switch is put in the X position. When we look at the circuit board, we see it is galvanically divided in two parts. The A side that handles the network side and the B side that does the feed to the audio player. Although just one board is used, electrically it in fact are two boards. This is clearly visible on the flip side of the board, where can be seen that there is no copper running from one side to the other. There of course need to be some transport of bits from one side to the other and that is done using these high speed analog devices isolators. In the same manner an isolating DC converter provides the power to the B side. Up to an audio 
calls the separation between the two sectors in the board the moat, like the moat that is used to surround cities or castles. So the isolators could be seen as drawbridges or ports that only grant access to people and goods that are allowed in. But enough fairy tales. The A side holds the four Ethernet ports module with integrated magnetics and transformer cores. The first line of defence you could say. To the left the SFP cage. Below this heatsink the Ethernet switch electronics, format converter, clock buffers and ultra low jitter differential flip flops are hidden. The power regulation for the A side is situated here. The B side is fed, as we have seen, by this isolating DC converter while further ultra low noise voltage regulation takes place here. When the network signal has passed the isolators, they are sent to the B side Ethernet switch electronics, format converter, clock buffers and ultra low jitter differential flip flops. These are controlled by the ultra low phase noise Cristec. CCHD575 crystal oscillator and Silicon Labs jitter attenuating clock synthesizer. Unless the clock switch is set to external, in which case the external clock signal is used. I promise you some more info on the SFP cage. SFP stands for small form factor pluggable and it holds modules like this that translate electrical signals to optical signals to be used with fiber optics cables. From a computer network point of view there seldom is a reason to use fiber at home. Fiber is for covering real long distances, but in an audio network there might sometimes be an improvement in sound quality. I know of no research that confirms this by the way. The only reason I can dream up is galvanic separation and the absence of influence by stray signals of any kind. In my case it did give a small improvement in sound quality, perhaps because I live close to the most powerful digital radio and digital TV transmitter in my country. Since there are several ways to convert electrical network signals to optical signals, you need to use compatible SFB modules. They cost a couple of tenors and fiber cable is about as cheap as UTP cable. You do need separate optical strands for send and receive, usually available in twin cable. If your switch doesn't have an SFP cage, you can use a medial converter like this. It is connected to, for instance, your NAS or router over UTP network cable. The SFP module is inserted and then over fiber connected to the ether region. As you might know, I own the AccuFox AccuSwitch SE and the SOTM SNH10G. They sound about equal, the SOTM offering two SFP ports and therefore is placed in my setup one. Since I bought the Relic Aries G2 digital transport, I hadn't compared these switches to a cheap switch. I had no idea to what extent the Aries G2 was able to filter out nasties coming from the network. The sound quality using the Aries G2 did improve so much. But replacing the SOTM switch for the Ether region gave a very clear improvement in sound quality yet again. The stereo image was yet another step more royal, voices even more natural and especially the lows were a clear step better. Not only was there more texture, it was better placed in the stereo image without getting unnatural. Since the SOTM was now unemployed, I placed it near my Intel NUC Rune Rock server at the third floor instead of the Zistel switch with SFP. I couldn't imagine this would make a difference, but it did. It wasn't a big difference. I switched several times to be sure and lost one kilogram running the stairs, which is good. Using the SOTM switch upstairs instead of the Zistel switch made the sound even more relaxed than it already was. Again it was a small difference and I wouldn't spend a thousand euros for it, but it was a difference nevertheless. Another thing I wanted to do is to try alternative power supplies. I've tried three. The S-Booster BOTW PMP Eco MK2 12 volts, the Uptone Ultra Caps LPS 1.2 set to 12 volts and the Syntax Extreme Performance Icon 12 volts. They all three brought some improvement. 
The difference between the S booster and the Uptown was very small and it was hard to say which one was better. The Syntex was the best of the three, but also here the difference might be too small to spend the extra money. In my case, with the mic at Brooklyn Bridge already being powered from the Syntex, it was a matter of connecting the second DC output to the Ether region. Whether spending the money on either of the three would offer fulfilment to you is hard to say. But if you can spend the money, it, it's worth trying if your dealer allows you to return the power supply if you're not satisfied. Next to the two switches I own, I also reviewed the clearly cheaper Silent Angel Bon N8 switch. Again, see my playlist of audiophile switches. Costing only 400 euros, it did give a clear improvement compared to normal consumer switches. But the Accu switch and the SOTM costing more than double were also clearly better. And that's fair. At 640 dollars, about 700 euros including VAT in Europe, the Uptone Audio Ether Regen is priced in between the Silent Angel and the SOTM and Accu switch. But it performs clearly better than all three. The number of ports is lower than on the others that offer 8 Ethernet ports, the SOTM additionally offering 2 SFP ports. But if you need more ports that will probably be to connect a computer or game console and then adding a consumer switch to the A side of the Ether region will be no problem. It will be interesting to see what next improvement is around the corner. Digital audio has come a long way and is, or at least can be, of extremely high quality nowadays, without costing you as much as your house. I already heard of a new switch on the horizon, so if you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media, so you will be informed when new videos are out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially, it keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. Whatever you do, enjoy the music.